Uh, MX, uh, as the H is on the end, the actual full name in Colombia is Imaging Experts in Healthcare Services, SAS. Uh, and uh, you can't get MX as a um, URL, so it's MXHS. Uh, that's how it came about. So what is MX? It's a medical imaging provider um, to the RISPAX market, which is the radiology imaging solution and picture archiving and communications uh, market. We're competitive because we've been designed from the ground up to meet end-to-end -end, uh, imaging practice needs with leading edge tools at a highly competitive price. And our aim is to grow into new geographic markets with the US and Australia important targets. The company was founded in 2012 uh, by two neuroradiologists and two engineers. And the company has grown initially with a low risk strategy um, through local distributors, and which has seen it expand across Central and South America. In 2018, the company achieved its ASX listing following a reverse takeover and we hit $6 million in total revenues for that year. In the year since listing, the company has achieved its FDA clearance into the US uh, and launched its first AI product and secured its first commercial customer in Australia. And most recently, the last quarter saw it achieve its highest quarterly revenues of just over 2.8 million. This shows the extent of the geographic coverage that we now enjoy. We're in 15 countries with 22 distributors. Oh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, this is the, uh, the geographic uh, expansion that we've uh, undertaken since 2012, uh, as I said, into Australia most recently. Uh, Heroco is now used in more than 270 centres by 227 customers. And this is, means it's being used by over 600 radiologists at over 87 hospitals and 150 clinics connected to over 33,000 devices. This means that Huruko is now used for in excess of 5 million studies per annum. At the heart of the Huruko platform, we provide the RISPAC solution. But Huruko does more than that. It can handle the end-to-end -end workflow for a radiology pra practice. At the beginning, we can order the patient scan. We can book the um, patient in with a radiographer send the image to a radiologist for interpretation, send the image to a second, um, for a second opinion if needed. We can provide the image back to the initial referring doctor through a patient portal, and we can even handle the billing process. The platform also includes the ability to create dashboards and provide um, statistical data, which our customers have used to greatly increase the efficiency of their businesses. I know that there's a lot of information on this next slide, uh, for sure, uh, but there's a lot our system can do. Uh, at the core, it's been built using the latest international medical informatics standards, including HIPAA compliance. We offer a vendor neutral archive, meaning we can store images from anybody, and the system is modular, meaning we can fit it in with other systems that are already in place. And key to our success is the fact that Heruko is truly zero footprint, meaning you can work from anywhere, um, you have a browser, and it provides genuine teleradiology capabilities. And this provides significant savings to our customers. Our Heruko portfolio now includes a radiology module, a Kila, a pathology module, a Lula, and a cardiology module, Anteros, all centered on our vendor neutral archive. There are four global megatrends at the moment, and these are centered around AI and machine learning, the digitization of healthcare, client marketplaces, and cloud computing and storage, and IMEX is at the center of these. Our software has won numerous awards. Most recently, we won first place at Andicom, which recognised our work on digital transformation and companies. And at the moment, we're a semi-finalist in the minis 
for best new radiology vendor following our FDA clearance last quarter. For those who aren't aware, Aunt Mini is the largest and most respective web community in the world for radiologists. We've got quite a number of success stories that, we can, that I can talk to, but I, I'd like to point out um, just a few of these, such as Clinica Las Americas. Clinica Las Americas is one of the, the top 20 most prestigious hospitals in Latin America. And it was a very large hospital that we won a few years ago. The reason that they were looking for a new vendor at the time, because the incumbent couldn't handle the tomosynthesis modality which they needed, and we were able to support that. And not only were we able to support that um, without requiring a large upfront payment, which is the traditional model, but we were able to um, come in at a price lower than that they were previously um, paying. And Clinica Las Americas has been so happy with us, they've actually partnered with us to produce um, the pathology and cardiology modules. Uh, another one that I'd like to mention is Coal Subsidio. Coal Subsidio is, is a household name in Colombia. It's probably akin to Medibank here. Um, and uh, that gave us a lot of recognition in the marketplace. Um, it, it was considered a very prestigious contract win for us. And in fact, subsequent to that, um, we've entered into another contract with Coal Subsidio, um, which involves running their uh, 19 radiology clinics. Um, for, and the advantage that that provides to us is, we, pardon me, we have a real world example where we can um, look to uh, develop our AI tools and expand the efficiency of, of a practice that we're in. CAFAM is another company like Coal Subsidio that's very prestigious in South America. Uh, Clinica San Pablo is a very big hospital um, business in Peru. Uh, two of the hospitals have over a thousand beds each. Uh, not a hospital per se, AG Mednet is a company based in Boston uh, in the US and it's one of the largest um, clinical trial companies in the world and they came to us looking to use the Huruko web viewer as part of their trials. Um, and for us, it was a very big validation um, for uh, the company um, by, by such a respected um, enterprise. The business model that we run, uh, we have uh, our revenue models are based on the SaaS, PaaS and one-off sales. Uh, PaaS is software as a service, um, which typically three to uh, five or seven year contracts. Uh, platform as a service includes um, hardware. Uh, it can include uh, uh, just the DICOM routers which are needed to uh, transfer the images, or it can include the modalities such as MRIs and CT scanners. Uh, we also have one-off sales. Um, our preferred model is recurring revenue, but uh, we do have a significant number of one-off sales, and they actually occur in the last quarter of the year um, as, as companies look to spend budget that they have um, available. Our target geography has been LATAM, uh, and now with FDA approval and our first client in Australia, we're looking to move in here. And um, we're looking at Europe as well, which has been more a, a lead for us. So uh, part of going to Europe will we need CE clearance in that market. Our target markets are private and public hospitals and also um, private practices. Uh, our first vertical has been in radiology, um, but we've expanded into anatomical path uh, pathology and also cardiology. Uh, one of our distributors in Central America also does a lot of X-ray imaging uh, airport, uh, and they're looking at whether uh, we would uh, partner with them as well in, in security body, body scanning. Um, another ology that we're looking at as well is gastroenterology. Uh, our distribution model has um, been essentially through local distributors who have the um, knowledge and contacts in the markets. And uh, we also have some specialist distributors. Now this is the, the uh, company growth over uh, the since inception, basically. Total contract value uh, is a measure of the future um, value of the, the contracts uh, that we're entitled to receive over the remaining life of the contract. Um, and the annualised recurring revenue is, is basically what, what we're locked in and we expect to receive in, in the next 12 months. 
There's, uh, this has grown 119% um, year on year from, from uh, last year to now. The small runoff in the last quarter is largely to due to the large coal subsidio contract, uh, which actually is only one year in duration. Therefore, we only book in 12 months of revenue. One quarter goes by, a quarter of the contract value is run off. But as you can see in annualised recurring revenue, which is actually up 187% uh, um, over the, the previous 12 months, you can see that uh, there's just a small drop there, which is actually an exchange rate um, uh, um, exchange rate variation. So that's why it's just dropped a little bit. Basically, um, uh, the business is uh, continuing to grow and, um, uh, and we aim to keep growing. Uh, looking at our pipeline, uh, this is only Latin America. This doesn't include any uh, for Australia and the US yet. Uh, we have total contract value uh, of $110 million in the pipeline, which is weighted down to uh, $46.5 million. Uh, the weighting is just basically where it is in the, in the business cycle, and so therefore the likelihood of winning. The market opportunity as we see it, the RISPAX market is growing um, at 7.4% and is expected to reach $5 billion in 10 years. Um, we see our next market opportunity as being the US, where we can now um, expand with the FDA clearance. Australia, where, as I had mentioned, we've got a, our first uh, local customer. Uh, and Brazil, uh, where we, we, our recent entry sees us with a very strong local distributor. And as I mentioned, uh, Spain um, is, is a possibility for us um, based on some local, uh, local connections. Um, uh, but we need CE clearance there. So in, in summary, um, we're looking to expand um, with the four target uh, geographies that we have. We have an increased proportion um, through the value chain, uh, through AI, uh, such as the tools we mentioned, um, that we can capture more of that, the value of the uh, scans being done. We think we can increase the proportion of the value chain uh, through diagnosis and interpretation. We've been working on product awareness, as I mentioned, AG Med is a worldwide clinical trial partner, um, which gives us a, a lot of um, visibility into the academic space. And also we um, work with teaching hospitals, uh, which will mean that the next generation of radiologists will be very familiar with our product. We have a land and expand strategy, uh, which is um, we, typically we can uh, we sell on the, the radiology, but then we're looking to also uh, add pathology and cardiology um, to hospitals, et cetera, that we're already in. And we have, we're developing a low touch deployment model uh, for the small clinics who currently can't afford uh, software like this. It's probably easiest to think of it as being the zero of a, a RISPAX solution. No one else um, offers it and currently, as I said, it's unaffordable. It would be uh, a cloud-based, purely cloud-based solution like Zero, where you go on uh, and you'll get a, a, um, a fairly standard um, installation that you'll be able to work with in your radiology practice. I hope I haven't rushed too quickly. Um, I can... No, we're, just we're, we're going to ask questions and we're going to interrogate you as well. Sure. So that's, that's going to be good. Yeah, that'll be well, great. The one thing I'll ask about you, Tony, is that you mentioned the word zero as though we're all accountants. Yeah. Uh, but is everyone comfortable with his reference to zero? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, you are, but you, you, you look like you're comfortable with accountants. Uh, <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that, by the way. <laughs> all right, so are there any questions for Tony? Klaus. Are the risk vendors your friend or enemy? Did, did you guys hear that question in the back? Do you, do you have a line? Uh, uh, sorry, question in the back. Are the risk vendors their friend or enemy? Yeah, risk vendors are their friend or enemy. Well, we're looking to replace them. Uh, we are zero footprint. It is a low cost um, model compared to our competitors. Uh, as I mentioned, we've been good at displacing AGFA in particular. Uh, uh, as I said, AGFA doesn't handle tomosynthesis. Uh, tomosynthesis is a, is a breast um, 
uh, modality uh, and quite advanced and new. So at the time, uh, they weren't supporting it. And so we looked to um, displace them. And we've had success in displacing um, other distributors from other uh, vendors. Our distributor model in South America has been, they're exclusive to us. So um, if a distributor signs with us, they have to um, displace their current um, competitor offering. Okay, we've got two mics now. So you've got a question over here. Are we on? Yep. Yeah. Uh, given that you're expanding to the US, um, what's your strategy with respect to uh, existing radiology providers like CareStream and GE? Are you looking to work with them? Or I know they have some product offering in the digitised space already, but I'm not sure if it's end-to-end. -end. Uh, they, they're not end-to-end. -end. They are only in the RISPAC space, which we will uh, also, if a large hospital already has their entrenched um, uh, enterprise billing systems, we will just plug into that. We don't come just as a end-to-end -end suite. We will just do the RIS packs. So CareStream uh, is a is a competitor out of ours. Okay. Are there any other questions? Back there. Uh, can you tell us who the customer is in Australia? Uh, countrywide Medical Ultrasound, which is a mobile uh, clinic in the Hunter Valley in New South Wales. Um, they have a, a, a unique proposition. They actually uh, have centres all around the Hunter Valley and the difficulty that they had was that we, um, uh, they used to basically put images onto USB and then when the van ended up getting back to the practice, the uh, radiologist could look at it, then there was quite a delay what we're able to achieve is um, through uh, the 4G network is sending the images straight away to the solution. It's presented to the radiologist almost straight away. The other thing that we've been able to do at um, CMU, or countrywide, uh, is replace four systems with one. Um, and so they're, seeing, they're seeing significant um, efficiency benefits out of the installation. Where's head office? Uh, the corporate head office is Sydney um, uh, in Mascot and the, but the main uh, trading office where um, most of the employees are uh, is in Bogota in Colombia and we ha also do uh, have a development site in Medellin in yeah. Colombia. So, so where do you hang out? I, I work in Mascot. Uh, and <laughs> you don't look, you don't look like a Bogota guy no, to me. No, no. Right. Bogota is a lovely place, actually. I is recommend it? it, but uh, yes, no, I'm Sydney-based. Okay, right, yeah. Um, and, and what's it like trying to integrate, you know, the, the practices of Colombians to Australians? Like, for example, are they responsible for sales or do you have a, a, a specific Australian sales force? So at the moment, we, because we've only just gone in with a soft launch into Australia, we haven't um, done... Uh, we haven't got a sales presence. Yeah. Um, so after we, we wanted to bed down the Australian site, the yeah. actually the hardest thing about ent entering the, the Australian market with the system was to do with the fact that most other countries and, and certainly uh, Latin American countries have a national ID number that formed the, the central core of the database in mm. terms of identifying people and Australia doesn't have a national ID number right. and you're not allowed to use tax file numbers or anything like that as an ID. So the system actually had to be re-architected uh, around that. That was actually the biggest technological challenge of coming into Australia. Right. And, and so now that you've got a local um, company, is that company going to be happy about you, you know, uh, advertising to other um, our, uh, operations that they're actually using your your system. Yes, they they're, they're um, happy to be uh, a reference site for us. Yeah, and they're providing testimonials. Yes. Okay. And and how long before that you th you've actually got a sales force on the ground and really ripping into all the potential customers out there? Well, uh, we are 
doing capital raise at the moment. So ah, I get, I so get, you're in a trading halt. I get you? to come here just during the middle of a trading halt yeah. uh, to raise some capital to accelerate our expansion into those target geographies that I'd mentioned. Okay, I know you probably can't necessarily tell us anything, mm. anything else, but. Are you planning on a really expensive holiday this year? Yeah. <laughs> to Bogota. To Bogota. To Bogota. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions you'd like to ask him? Otherwise, I'll, I'll just keep grilling him until we get to the, the right time. Right, Fiona? You, you say, I've got to keep going. Yeah, there's questions here. Yeah. How does your solution compare with... Yeah. How does your solution compare with some of the other vendors? Like, would Prometics be a competitor? Uh, yes, Prometicus is, is a competitor in the RISPAC space. Uh, they offer um, very um, high-end tools. It's a very good offering, um, but it is aimed at the very, very high end of the market. The tools that, that they have that we don't offer through the web because uh, HTML5 doesn't support it yet, we actually integrate um, with a couple of other uh, specialist providers of those tools. So if a, if a if a teaching hospital, for example, needs those tools, uh, we will integrate in. And Max 7? Max 7 is really only a, a PAC solution, they're not really a RIS solution, so they're not, um, they're, they're a bit of a more narrowing offering than, than us, but they're, they're doing quite well as well. Is there anyone else? Um, North here? In, in Australia, Volpara, but Volpara again. Oh, well, they're New Zealand, but they're listed here. Volpara is um, a, another competitor, but they actually are more focused in the um, mammography um, uh, sphere, and, and they, they've gone quite deep into that as a specific tr strategy. We're a bit more uh, um, covering everything. Any other questions? Well, well uh, Tony, I can't put a lie detector on you here, but I'd like to. You can try. Okay. Um, if you had to really explain what is so significantly better about your uh, product compared to your rivals, what is that? And is it going to be easy to explain that to potential customer base? And secondly, will it be easy to market that story to that customer base? Well, being an accountant, I can tell you that it's cheaper. Well, and therefore, it's, a, it's a important to, to everyone, hospital administrators and mm. accountants alike. Yeah. Uh, because it is um, fully web um, delivered, mm. uh, the implementation and ownership, uh, total cost of ownership of, of the solution is, is a lot cheaper than our competitors. Yeah. Uh, they also don't necessarily offer the full practice um, suite. Uh, and we can, can roll it out quite quickly. And I, I did hear a, a radiologist say that they wish this had been around being web enabled um, because you can even look at it on your iPad or your iPhone because um, they get rung at two o'clock in the morning um, with, a, okay. a, with a, a, is this a blood um, bleed on the brain? Yeah. Um, Previously, they've just had to go into where the workstation is that's set up with the tools to actually be able to mm. uh, analyse it. So they can, this, it, they can do it at the party. They can, yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of radiologists that, I, would like that, I'd say. <laughs> I don't... It, it, it's obviously better on a monitor, but they can, <laughs> they can give a, like, a, no, no, there's a, there's a problem right now. And, okay. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so. Okay, that's great. All right, any other questions? Well, um, we've got the mic covered. You're talking about accessibility from anywhere. I know from personal experience, because I know somebody owns a radiology business, that they have trouble uh, attracting and keeping talent for analysis. And so uh, would you say that's another big advantage in that you can geographically disperse your talent pool? Yeah, for sure. As I mentioned, um, CMU in the Hunter Valley, uh, they are mobile and doing teleradiology. One of the difficulties that you have in Colombia and the Amazon jungle is the internet's not so fast. So um, it, it's been built from the ground up. We have um, proprietary um, uh, method of, of compressing and, and sending the images across so we can deal with very poor connectivity. Um, but yes, we have in Colombia with the coal subsidio contract, we have teleradiology uh, running right now. And as you said, there's, you don't need a dedicated workstation um, that costs can cost, you know, $20,000 for a monitor alone. Um, you did a great, great job, Tony, particularly for an accountant. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Tony Thomas. Thanks.